2016 started off with a bang. We had bought tickets for an all-night free flow event at the Park Hyatt Hotel, and it was off the chain. It was my fourth month in Shanghai, and I'd become fast friends with this girl named Elisa. Not only did we work together, but we also lived in the same building and spent all of our time together. Shanghai definitely had its high points. However, my seven to seven work schedule was killing me. The pollution, which reaches all time highs in the winter, was suffocating. Shanghai's traffic is insane, yo. We got rear-ended hard. It was like two or three of them back to back. Yeah. The car in front of us stopped. We stopped hella quickly, and then it was just like boom, boom. I was so ready to take a break from both work and Shanghai. Thankfully, in February, my school gave us three weeks of paid vacation. Drew and I planned the perfect getaway. First stop, Seoul. We're just gonna like eat a bunch of food, see a bunch of shit again, and I'm gonna spend it all with Drew, obviously, and with my number one B, Caroline. Show me love. These garlic plates. I also got to see my oma, aka Korean mom, Stella. After four short days in Seoul, we headed to El Nido in the Philippines. An early morning flight, a six hour bumpy van ride later, and we'd made it to paradise. El Nido is certainly charming with its half sleepy village, half tourist trap kind of appeal. But our main reason for coming would be the four day island hopping expedition led by Abandoned Paradise. Good morning. Today is the first day of our expedition and we haven't left yet, but we are about to. It might sound trite to describe a vacation this way, but the expedition was seriously one of the best things I've ever done in my life. Did you see? Did you see? You should see what I'm on. Sailing and snorkeling by day, camping on random islands by night, it was heaven and a much needed catharsis for my busy Shanghai life. If you want to see more of this video, you can click on a link to the video above. We also managed to squeeze in a day paddleboarding trip around some lagoons in Alito. After this vacation, work felt like a breeze, and in March, I was prolific enough to pump out several vlogs about life and work in Shanghai. Check out the links in the description box. Oh my gosh. And let's keep going, let's keep going. In April, Drew's brother Graham came to visit, so we whisked him away to Malaysia. This is always what happens to us. Don't feel bad.
understands not We could do this together Running out in the streets We no looking after But I don't see where we fit in The misfits of the lost generation chasing dreams A week later, Drew's best friend Rob came to visit from London. So we took him to Sujo's Water Village. See the bunny guy? That guy is a bunny. The bunny guy? The bunny guy? Ah! That's awesome. He's like, everybody loves me right now because I have a bunny. (laughs) The bunny's like, what's up? Oh, Oh, my God. May zoomed by. Indulging my homesickness, I briefly visited Seoul for the second time that year. I am still in love with Korea. Fuck it. It's awesome. It feels so good. Like, this stuff. They're so good at shit like that. Like, little knickknacks and, like, themesy things. And in June, Elisa and I took a weekend trip to beautiful Hangzhou. You look like you're about to be like in a Sierra music video. <laughs> We're an old Asian lady position. Suddenly, it was time to leave. Drew and I had made a pact that if he followed me to Shanghai, he'd get first pick of our next home. He chose New York. While the prospect of moving to the illustrious Apple was thrilling, I was also deeply sad to leave Asia, which had been my home for the past four years. After leaving Shanghai, I embarked on a seven-day trip to Siem Reap. There, I attended a meditation retreat at an amazing center called Hariharalaya. I needed time to reconcile with the idea of such a drastic change. The twice daily meditations, all vegan food and digital detox was guiding and healing exactly what I needed. On July 13th, I arrived in New York City Except for two layovers in Seattle, I hadn't been in the United States for four years. Everything felt at once familiar and foreign. But boy, was it nice to finally live somewhere where I spoke the language and could read all the signs. However, I couldn't settle down just yet. First, I had to see my mama in Washington State. We're going hiking. This is my mom. Yeah. 
She's an avid camper hiker. And we're going to hike around, around the Mount Rainier area, right? Um, and we're going to, to Spray Park. We're going to Spray Park. because she's making me do it. All your body in and then you are refreshed. Okay, 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 okay. okay. <laughs> You know, I've been back from Cambodia and I just find it really funny because you don't know about that bug life until you've been. I made a fake. Yeah, you're so cool, mom, photobombing me. I need to apologize. It's too late. It was so nice to catch up with my mom. But after my pilgrimage to Washington, there was one more trip we had to make to Drew's home, Bermuda. Hi, welcome to Bermuda. gone specifically to attend Cut Match, which is a two day long cricket festival up this year in Somerset on the west end of our island. It's going to be fun. Then there was the non mariners race, a giant water party at Mangrove Bay. When August hit, it was back to reality. We were on the hunt for a new apartment. In the end, we settled on a place in Brooklyn. We're so excited to announce that we're pregnant. Just kidding, no. We got a new apartment. Suddenly, it was full on moving mode. Since we'd been abroad, we had to start from scratch. By this point, I had gotten really into Snapchat. So we're done with Ikea. Thank fucking God, Yay. she's a cluster bug. We got a bunch of furniture, took a trip to Bed Bath & Beyond. <laughs> picked up some plants, installed our internet, and we were set. 
we finally had our home in New York City. Don't worry, I'll upload an apartment video soon. As intimidating as the move was, I never felt alone. Coincidentally that year, a few friends from college had also made the big move, so we reconnected over Chinatown dinners. I also made incredible new friends. Without their outreach and support, my transition into the city would have been more difficult and far lonelier. It has been over six months since I've moved back to the States. Hey, so I'm just in the kitchen. Some things have settled. <laughs> and I'm in the middle of cooking, obviously, because that's what you do in the kitchen, right? Um, While others have not. Like my homesickness for Asia. And addiction to travel. But this is a new adventure, and with full gusto, I greet what will come. Above all, I am simply grateful for all that I've experienced in 2016.